Listen, go ahead. I want you to help me preach a little bit before I, before I get started. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I'm neighbor. I'm bigger on the inside than I am the outside. Yeah, y'all done so good. Let's do it again. Amen. Y'all ready? Say, neighbor. I'm bigger on the inside than I am the outside. Man, y'all got it. Y'all got it today. Sounds so good in here. Listen, whatever you got going on, on the outside. Listen, Brian, you say, Brian, you don't understand where I'm at. My, my, my health is fading. I'm, I'm, I'm spiritually bankrupt. Listen to me very carefully. What you got on the inside of you, Jesus Christ is bigger than any devil, any demon, any situation, any circumstance, anything that you got going on in your life right now. My God is bigger than that. Somebody give him praise in here today. I'm trying to preach. I'm trying to preach. Hallelujah. I want to minister part two on Be Made Whole. Be Made Whole, part two. Two weeks ago, I told you guys how to be made whole. I gave you three reasons, three ways that you can be made whole. And listen to me, this is just a preface to get you where I need you to get today. I told you the first way to be made whole. If you remember the first thing that Jesus told the leper, he says, get to the house of worship. Go to the high priest. What he was saying was this. He said, well, I, don't, I just don't think a lot about church. Jesus does. He died for it. It is very important for you to be in the house of worship under a high priest. Now, listen, I am not a high priest. He is the high priest, all right? But if the house of God is under the anointing of God, the anointing of God would take care of the house of God. So he said, get into a house of worship. And I like this. Number two, I told you, get your leper praise on. Get your leper worship on. It don't matter if your neighbors are sitting there with their hands crossed like this. You get your leper worship on. You make your mind up before you even walk into this church. Today, I come to get my praise on. Today, I'm not going to let my neighbor out praise me. The one in the back out praise me. I'll raise my hands. I'll dance if I have to. But I come today to let everybody know I've got something in me that's bigger than on the outside of me. And I'm at the house of worship, so guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to get my praise on. Hallelujah. The third thing I told you, which is very important, I told you start praising God for who he is. For who he is and not for what he has done. Now, I know it's tough for the religious people because the religious people will sit there and go, well, I'm supposed to thank him. Yes, you are. But I said, you praise him for being God. Not that he's going to answer your next prayer. Not that he's going to stop your enemy. Watch this. You thank him because he is God all by himself. Hallelujah. You praise him for being God and no other reason. I told you, could you praise him if he never answered another prayer? That right there, listen to me. That's some thick stuff. Could you praise him? No matter where you're at, what's going on, your situation. Listen, I've seen some of you. When your children were out in the foreign land eating with the pigs, you still praise God, and I praise the Lord for you. Hallelujah. Remember, you praise God for who he is, not all what he's going to do for you. Listen to me. Luke 17, if you have your Bible, i got to get this word. I'm excited. Luke chapter 17. I love you guys. Praise God, I missed you. Luke 17, verse 11 through 13. I'm reading now the uh, King James. The Bible says in verse 11, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices. Here's where my, my, my core, my context is going to come. Look what they said. These ten men, they lifted up their voices, and they said, Jesus Master, have mercy on us. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus, hallelujah, Master, have mercy on us. They knew him as Jesus. But this is the first time in your Bible where he was called Master. This is the first time in your Bible that they, they said master. So how do we be made whole? I told you three reasons. Let me give you one more. How to be made whole. The, the one point, the only point, believe this or not, that I want to give you today, how to be made whole, is Jesus must become the master of your life. 
Now listen to me very carefully. This sermon is probably going to get all ten of your toes. It got all ten of my toes and all ten of my fingers. It got everything on my body. I'm telling you, it wore me slick out. Now, how many of you know you should know when you've been in the presence of God? You should know when you come to church. You should know when you get a rhema word that's anointed by heaven. Amen? You should know it. Jesus must become the master of your life. The master. See, I love this story in the Bible. I just love it. I love all the story. This one really speaks to me. I started thinking about this, and I don't know where you're at on your journey with God right now, but I started thinking about my journey. Now, I'm sure there may have been some times that I said this word, but I can't remember a day or a time that I have ever called Jesus master. Never. I, I can't. Now, I may have, but I can't remember. See, I, I don't remember saying, let me tell you what master is. This is, <laughs> I'm telling you, this is it. Master means a person with total control and total authority over you. Ah, oh, it's going to get good in here. A person with total control or total authority over you. See, a lot of people know him as Jesus. Come on. A lot, even the devil knows him as Jesus. But very few people call him master. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. You say Jesus, but you don't say master. You say savior, but you've not, you said you've not yielded it. To what God has called you to do. There's some of you under my voice, under my teaching today, that God has been calling you as a young man and you have not called him master yet because why? You have not surrendered to him yet. Ah, uh, that's right. I was 14 years old, 14. I still got my first sermon that I preached at Hills Chapel Baptist Church. And here's, I'm telling you, I still remember. It was short. It was like six minutes long. And I know some of you look at me saying, well, boy, where'd that preacher go? He, he, he got laughed, raptured out, I'm telling you. Now, some of us, I wish he would go back. Now, watch. Listen to me. I remember that. But listen, does God got complete control and complete authority over your life? See, there's a difference. Listen, if you're a note taker, I want you to take these three things I'm going to tell you. There is a difference between Savior, Lord, and Master. There is a difference between Savior, Lord, and Master. Listen, if you're saved, you can call him Savior. He died for you. Amen? How many of y'all know Jesus is Savior? That means you're born again. My God, if not, we're going to have a lot of salvations today. Woo! There's only like five or six of you raised your hand. Listen, you should be proud. You shouldn't be ashamed. If Jesus died for you, you should say, Preacher, he died for me, and I'm not ashamed of him. I'm going to ask y'all one more time. How many of you know Jesus as Savior? All right, there's still some lost people in here. Number two, how many of y'all know him as Lord? Lord means he owns you. Okay, he owns you. He owns you. But watch this. How many of you know, even though Jesus may own you, you still got a free will? Yeah, he may own you, but you still got a free will. But watch this. Here's where this master is a great thing. Because if you say master, it's between you and God. Watch this. You've got to say this part. If God died for you, he's your savior. If, he's your, if he owns you, he's your Lord. But watch this. Only you can call him master. That means, God, you own me. You control me. You're my life. You're my next breath. I can't walk without you holding my hand. I can't do nothing without you, Jesus Christ. Let me break it down to you Kentucky style. In other words, here's how big he is if you call him master. You couldn't have got out of bed this morning. You couldn't reach down and tie your shoes without Jesus Christ being the master of your life. See, a lot of people know him as Savior. A lot of people know him as Lord. But do you call him Master? Come on. Master. Master. See, we, listen, you, we've, got, we've got to get to the place where Jesus calls all the shots. Come on. Listen. Listen. Do you still call all the shots in your life? 
Do you hear God whispering your name and you know God is dealing with you, but for some odd reason you've got, you think you've got more power through the free will and you take control over your life? Watch this, y'all ready? It's not your life. Y'all ready? Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Because a lot of people may play church. I don't. Because I realize this may be my last sermon. This may be y'all's last worship service. <laughs> when you die to your flesh, yourself, you'll live for Christ. Well, I'm telling you, listen to me very carefully. When these ten lepers called Jesus Master, what they said, they were identifying his very nature. Y'all know Psalms 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord. Hey, delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Let me give you a Greek meaning of, of, of delighting yourself. What it means is this, putting yourself in a position to hold what God wants to give you. What it means is this, that, that I'm going to quit justifying my lifestyle to get my, my fleshly needs. What it also needs is that, God, I submit. Y'all listen to me. I submit. I submit. I yield. Y'all got me? Somebody say amen. I'm yielding to whatever you want, God, in, my, in, in this life that you have given me. Listen to me. You know why that one leper, I, thought, I started thinking about that one leper. I don't know his journey. Dylan, I don't know how far he was away from God to the, to the church house. But somewhere along the way, the nine Jews, the nine lepers left him and went back home. This one leper, this one Samaritan, this one stranger, Brendan, that the Bible is talking about, turned around. And that's what I'm praying in this church, that we have a turnaround. That, man, we turn slick around. I know I'm going down the wrong path, but I've got to make a U-turn and turn in my life and head back home toward Jesus Christ. That's what we need. He made a turn around. Everybody say he turned around. He turned around, and he went back toward Jesus. He left the nine, and he went to the one. Listen to this very carefully. When he got there, Dylan, he was still missing fingers. Oh, his leprosy was gone. But he was still, lepers had, was missing fingers and missing toes and they're, they're, they're missing eyes and they're missing their nose. Now listen to this. All the rest of them went home satisfied. This one said, oh no. <laughs> I'm turning around and I'm going back to Jesus. But this time, Eddie, he called him master. He called him master. And I, I can just see this in my spirit. When he got to Jesus, he knelt down. He looked up. And he said, didn't I not heal 10 of you? Where's the other nine? He said, God, I know, I understand that, Lord, you healed all of us. But today, God, no matter what, I surrender. I yield. I delight myself in you with fingers or without fingers. God, I praise you. So see, what I'm saying is this. He called him master for the first time. In other words, for the first time in his life, he's saying, God, y'all ready? You got me. You got me. You got me. Isn't it sad? Most of us go through life until either we're on our deathbed or sick in our bodies. And for, for God to get you flat on your back, for the only way that you can do then is to look up. I remember two years ago, I got put back in the hospital because my diabetes was out of control. I got put back in the same room in ICU room 410. I remember this like yesterday. And I remember laying flat on my back. I could count the ceiling tiles. That's OCD. That's what that'll do for you. Count every one of the ceiling tiles in that ceiling. But I remember God speaking to me, and I still hear him speaking to me right now. I got you. I got you. See, we look at pain as opposition. We look at pain as something bad. But sometimes, I feel the Holy Ghost, God will allow circumstance in your life to put you flat on your back. That way all you can do is look up. Y'all hear me today? Sometimes God will allow that. He don't have to, but he does. I remember my grandmother. She was 86 years old at Grandview Nursing Home. I'd go in to see my grandmother. And two things my grandmother always wanted me to do was read her the Bible and pray with her. Read her the Bible and pray with her. And I remember the last words that my grandmother spoke over my life. I'll never forget this. She was flat on her back, 
She could not walk. She was confined to a bed. Most people were looking at her and saying, Miss Rafferty, what's wrong with you? How can you praise God like this? But here was the last words my grandmother spoke over my life. She said, Brian Keith. And when she called me Brian Keith, I knew she was serious. She said, I'm 86. But God becomes more precious as you get older. And there my grandmother was, walking through the valley of the shadow of death. She couldn't, her mind was gone. She couldn't read good. She couldn't hear good. She was 86 years old, confined to the bed. But she was delighting herself in the Lord. And he gave her the desires of her heart. She was, she finally got to a point in her life. He said, I got you. Does God got you? Does God have you this morning? Or do you think you've got God? See, you're more powerful when he goes before you than you are him saying, God, I'm going this way, won't you follow me? I'm telling you, what God is doing in my life, he is wrecking me. The ten lepers, they finally called Jesus master. They were identifying him. You finally got control over my life. God, I am a mess without you. You'll go back to drinking if he's not master over your life. You'll go back to the clubhouse. I'm preaching better than y'all acting here on a Sunday. If he's not the master of your life, I promise you, you'll fill that hole when your heart up with something that is not of God every single time. Hallelujah. Preach it, Brian. I will. Thank you. I wrote this down. I wonder. This is me talking to myself. Because i got to do this when I preach. I wonder what my life would really look like if Jesus was the master. The master. The authority. The Lord over my life. Not just my Savior, not just my Lord, but he's my master. I wonder what your life would look like. Oh, I know, I know all y'all. Most of you out here know him as Savior. Most of you know him as Lord. But do you know him as Master. That means when your flesh wants to do something, and that master Jesus says, No, 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 no. I don't, I don't think you should. See, master means owner. Master means controller. Master means authority over your life. Could it be the reason why most churches are not prospering in Jesus is because it's man ran and not God ran? And when you get a church that is ran by a pastor or a deacon or a man, you're down, you're going downhill quickly. When you get a home that is led by the man and not the man, your home is just a matter of time for it's firing down. Y'all know it's right. He's got, listen, listen, master means owner of all. Everything I have is not mine I'm living on borrowed time. I'm living, you're living, we're living on borrowed time. We waste more time majoring on the minors, majoring on stuff that is not eternal, majoring on things that really just don't matter. You know what matters? The person standing beside you and in front of you and behind you. The person that you're going to meet at the marketplace that don't know Jesus Christ. That is who matters. Woo! Uh, I think I'll just do, a, do it myself. Hey. Hey. That's right. Listen. If you want to be healed... You want to be delivered. You want to be set free. You want to be made whole. You must be willing, listen to me, to yield and surrender to whatever, 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 whatever God wants you to do. I said that before. God, I'm yours. Take me and use me for your glory. And he sends me to Russell County. Sends me. They roll up the streets. At eight, I was like a foreigner in a, in a foreign land. But let me tell you what, how good God is. We got a young lady here today named Patty. She comes to the second service. I was her pastor in Russell County for four years. She got something 
under the leadership of God at that church. And now she drives back and forth, back and forth, back and forth each Sunday because she knows there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. That little girl, Ashley, a double lung transplant. I wish y'all could have seen her with a mask on. I loved her heart. I reached out to shake her hand. She said, I can't shake your hand, but I love you. I just met her. Y'all see what Jesus would do? When he becomes the master of your life, that means he owns you. He's the authority. You're under his leadership. When he says jump, your response is how high, hallelujah. When he says pray, you say, God, who do you want me to pray for? I know this sounds so elementary, but it's so true. Let me show you something. I've got a key. It's called the master key. This master key will open up every door at my house. It will open the front door. It will open the back door. It will open the basement door. It will open every door. Everybody say every door. Every door, this one key. I used to have, oh my God, five or six keys. And I'd be one of those guys that'd be like five below zero. And I'd be going, wrong one. Wrong one. I'd get so mad. So finally I got smart. I went to Lowe's and got me a, a key that fits all locks. I highly recommend it to you people who have no patience. <laughs> so true. But this key... Will open up any door. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Any door in my house. It will let me in instead of keeping me out. And what God just spoke into my spirit was, if he can become the master key of your life, he will unlock your heart and let God hey, all the way in. Y'all hear me today? I'm telling you, most people have a master key, but they're trying to open up somebody else's house. Yeah. Yeah, you got a key to your place. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Take care of your own bad self, and that's a full-time job. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all acting. What I just came out to tell y'all is this. Do you have a master key? Because if you've got a master key, I'm telling you, God says, I am going to do more in your life if you let me be the master, the key to your life. I will open up, hallelujah, thank you, Holy Ghost, doors that the enemy has tried to lock you out of. I will step into a situation. If you let me have the key to your house, I will come in, hallelujah, and I will dwell with you, thus saith the Lord. But you've got to let him have the key. Y'all hear me today? Somebody say amen. Yeah. He wants the key. He is the master key. Listen, there's two reasons. There are two reasons why people are stuck. There's two reasons why some people are not growing. There's, some, there's these two reasons why people are stagnant. There's two reasons why people are the same today, Jared, as they was a year ago. There's two reasons. You can't blame it on people. Watch this. What, how y'all think this would work? If I get to heaven and God says, Brian, you were the under-shepherd of the most high shepherd. How come you didn't lead them people? And what if I said, God, they, they didn't like it? How do y'all think that's going to work? It ain't going to work too good. There's two reasons why we know, we know some people that are stuck. They're stuck in a rut. They're in a pit, and it seems like they can't get out. They made the commercial, help me, I've fallen, and I Y'all ready? They haven't yielded or surrendered to God. God has not become the master of their life. Watch this, y'all ready? They're still calling the shots. They're still calling the shots. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to act the way I want to act. I'm under grace. I'm going to heaven. Watch this. You better be careful, sir. You better quit abusing grace card because a true man of God a true man of God not only knows that he's saved, not only knows that he belongs to the Lord, but he's constantly making changes and shifts in his life to try to let God can become the master of his life. Number two was they haven't made Jesus the master of their lives. They've not yielded. They've not surrendered. 
and they've not made Jesus the master of their life. True story. True story. I just wonder, her today, I'm almost finished, I think. No, I got two weeks to make up for it, don't I? Never mind. <laughs> I just wonder right now, listen to me, if you're a note taker, how many people here today are missing out from God because they refuse to give Him total control of their lives? I just wonder how many pastors. How many people in churches today are missing out from the favor of God because they, 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 don't, they have not let God become the master of their life? Oh, it's so true. See, I wrote down here, the safest place to be is when you're out of control and God is in control. When you feel like your life is out of control, I'm gonna be, here's what I have learned over 20-some years of being a pastor. When I don't feel that I can fix it, when I feel down, when I feel like I, my life is just spinning, I'm out of control, but when I bow down and say, God, whatever you want, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, ever how you want me to pray, whatever you want me to sing, God, I'll do it because, Lord, you are the master, the master, hallelujah, of my life, the master. That means he's got authority. Watch this. I don't watch. Hallelujah. God's feeding me. I don't tell God what I'm going to do. I ask God what he needs done. Y'all got me. Somebody say amen. I don't say, God, I'm going to do this. Will you bless me? No, I say, God, is this what you want me to do? So bless me. You see what I'm saying? I think we got in, a, in a, such a blessed world in society we wake up and we tell God, to God, today, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. I'm going here. I'm doing this, that, and the other. What if God says, oh, I don't want you to do that? No. I, I don't want you to do that. See, I know somebody here right now, under my teaching, under this preaching, you know Jesus as Savior. You know him as Lord. But you never called him Master. You've not called him master. You are still calling the shots. You still have your own agenda, your itineraries, your schedule, your calendar, your events. You're doing this. You're doing that. My question to you is this. Did God say you could? Now listen, a lot of times pastors come off, and I do not want to come off this way. That boy, they, they got it all figured out. Watch this, y'all ready? Please watch me. I am still a student. I am still a work in progress. I am still learning from Jesus Christ. But here's what I know, and here's what I want. I want him to be my master. Yeah. You know what that means? Freedom. Freedom. Some of you are worried about things that you cannot control or you can, I'm preaching better than y'all are acting. Some of you are in a season in your life, you're going to bed biting your fingernails, you're not sleeping, you're tossing, you're turning, you're waking up at one, you're waking up at two, you're restless because why? You have not made him the master of your life. I'm, hey, I'm preaching good. I'm telling you, I love you, Brendan. And I'm not going to ever be one of them type of preachers that's going to get up here. I don't care if we get to 10,000. If someone says, I love you, I'm going to stop and say, I love you back. I would, I would much rather Jesus be the master of this church than Elkhorn become like a robot. We got one song here, two songs here, a benediction here, and the Holy Ghost don't show up. I would much... I would much rather have five full of the Holy Ghost than a thousand that don't know nothing. I got to have Jesus. He's got to be our master. Y'all feel me? Y'all understand that this morning? Woo! We got to have the Holy Ghost. Well, I don't believe it. Well, you ain't saved. Because three is one, one is three. You can't say I know God and I know Jesus, but I don't know the Holy Ghost. Ooh, I, 
I felt good. See, I can, I can just see these ten lepers. They're tired. They're wore out. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Ten went, nine went home. One had a turnaround breakthrough. Finally fell upon his knees and said, Jesus, Jesus, Master, whatever, listen, can y'all say this? I'm, listen, I'm working on this. Y'all hear me? I, I am not going to sit and tell you I've done stuff and I've not done it. I'm trying my best to get to this point in my life because I know if I can ever truly, listen to me, truly not just say, God, I love you from the inside out. God, consume me from the inside out. But say, God, consume me. Whatever you want, God. Can y'all say this morning, God, whatever you want, I'll do it. Whatever. Whatever. God, you want, I'll do it. Y'all better be careful. Because he'll hear you. And the next thing you know, you'll have a, a assignment in front of you. <laughs> it's going to mess your flesh up. God will put an atheist in front of you. God, God will put an agnostic in front of you. God will allow somebody to mess up your day. You'll get stuck in slow traffic. Hey. I, I ain't going to say this. I was at Walmart. I'll tell y'all this. Here's how good God is. Y'all know how shopping season is. Everybody say, oh, no. Oh, double dog, no. And so I was riding around, and I seen a, a parking spot. That uh, I was going to get. I even turned my blinker on. <laughs> dink, dink, dink. You know, going left. Going this way. And a car, so helped me, pulled right up in, like that. And ooh, right went in front of me. And y'all, I'm not, I had all kinds of emotions. <laughs> I'm not, I'm telling y'all. Listen, I, I know, I know I'm born I know he's my Savior. I know he's my Lord. But that day, the master part had a little problem with. So that, that person pulled up in there, and I rolled my window down just about that much, and I looked. <laughs> and she had the nerve. Here's what she said. I beat you. <laughs> y'all think I'm telling y'all. And I was like, oh, no, she didn't. I thought Medea was going to come. <laughs> and man, in my flesh, here's what I want. I want it to do. I did not. I wanted to circle that parking lot until she come back out. I, I, I wanted to. But instead, I said, I'm going in. And I followed her a little bit. And then, y'all, 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 here's how God works with me, Drew. It's just me, all right? I am a mess. I am a work in progress. Come on, y'all. I seen y'all at Walmart, too, up in aisle 13. I, I, I know what y'all doing on, uh, yeah, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I know. While I was walking, ooh. While I was walking, God said, bless her. I'm like, God, did you see her pull up in front of me with my flasher ding ding on and said, she beat me, God. How many of y'all know when you say, God, I surrender? Uh-huh. He'll mess you up at Walmart. He'll mess you up out on the interstate. 
He'll mess you up at church. He'll mess you up at home. He'll mess you up wherever you're at. If you've got a relationship with Christ, no matter where you're at, there he is. He'll go before you. He'll go behind you. He'll go around you. He'll go under you. But God will mess you up. So I'm still learning this master stuff. Still learning it. In closing, I want to ask you this. I want to ask this question. Is Jesus the master of your life? I didn't say. Watch. I didn't say, is he your savior? I did not say, is he your Lord? I ask you, is he your master? Because you know what master will make you do? Bless somebody. You know what him being a master of your life, when you're wanting to chew somebody up and spit them out? He'll say, you know what? You need to go give, give them a hug. That's what God will do. God's all about the love factor. And watch this. God loves you. He loves an atheist as much as he loves you. God loves ISIS as much as he loves you. Because God is no respecter of persons. So is Jesus the master of your life? Let me ask you this. Do you still call the shots in your life? <laughs> Delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. That means this, God, I am yielding myself under your leadership. God, you have authority over my life. I'm telling y'all, it would be hard telling what Elkhorn would look like if Jesus was the master of her life. It's hard telling what your, ma your, your marriage would look like if Jesus was the master over your marriage and you quit trying to be the boss man of your marriage. Hey. Have you yielded? Have you surrendered? And here's the greatest question. What's holding you back from totally giving your life to God right now? What is that one thing in your life that is holding you back from giving your total surrender to God right now? Well, Brian, I can't be good enough. You never will be. That's why they call him Jesus. Well, Brian, I got to stop drinking and cussing and chewing and doing before I come to church. Watch this. You ready? You come to church. Let the anointing change you and everything else will work itself out. What's your issue? What's controlling you right now? Come on. Who? is controlling you what is controlling you what is stopping you from surrendering your life to God completely right now praise team you guys come you say Brian I've got bad habits in my life I do too sir Brian sometimes my attitude just stinks mine does too ma'am but here's what I've noticed. The more, watch, y'all ready? Here it is, illustrative sermon. The more I bow, the more he's elevated. Y'all see it? The more I bow down, the more he's over me. Boy, that's a good word. The more, the lower I get, the higher he becomes. Y'all getting this word today? Because most people want to live a life like this, dominary. Watch this. I know he's your savior. I cannot get this word out of my spirit. I really believe in salvation. I believe the majority of us is probably saved. I do believe there's someone here today that does not know Jesus Christ. Oh, you may know him as savior. You may know him as Lord, but you've not made him the master of your life. What is it going to take? Becoming an 86-year-old woman in the nursing home laying flat on your back? What's it going to take? A health issue, a health problem to make us realize that God is the master over our life? Listen to me. I, I, I can't even breathe without God saying, breathe! can't walk I'm telling y'all listen to me here's how big 
how powerful he is. The Bible says in Isaiah that he stepped out of heaven onto nothing. Stepped out of heaven. And Tom, here he was, standing on nothing. Here's how big he is. Y'all ready? He said, boy, it sure is dark out here. Let there be light. Boom. Man. It sure is. We sure need some animals on this earth. And there they were. Man. Here's what God said. You read your Bible. Man shouldn't live by himself. I'm going to make me a partner. And the Bible says, I love this. He knelt down and started getting some, some old dirt. Y'all watch. I, I'm not lying. It's in your Bible. Genesis chapter 1 and 2. It's really good. He made arms. Made little fingers out of the dust and the sands of the shores. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, Jesus breathed. Uh. Hey! <laughs> you say, Brian, you're crazy. No, I'm right. You say, Brian, he had sand on a shore, and he breathed into sand, and it became a living soul. That's what I'm telling you. Hey! And then the Bible says something really crazy. He took a rib out of the man and he gave it to the lady, the woman. And God just spoke into my spirit. He said these words to all you single people. Be careful who you give your rib to. <laughs> Be careful. Just don't give your rib to anybody. And the Bible says, I love this. Man messed up, but God made a sacrifice for him out of animals. A lamb, sheep's clothing. And the Bible goes on to say that Jesus Christ took our sin and died on the cross. So me and you, the living souls, can rest in heaven with Him someday. God just didn't say, hey guys, you're saved and I'm your Lord, but I need to become the master of your life. And I really believe in the nation, in the country we're living in today, we know him as Savior. We know him as Lord. But even in here today, y'all watch me, even in here right now, very few people has made him master. So I double dog dare y'all to come to this altar today and delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in him. What's that mean, Brian? That means that you're out of control of your life and he owns you. He is in control of your life. Whatever he wants, that's what I'll do. See, that's easy to say on a Sunday. <laughs> but I'm going to ask you for the rest of the days of your life the best you can to make him, Jesus, the master of your life. Can y'all do that? It's tough. That means it's, watch this, y'all ready? You don't call the shots no more. I don't call the shots. I'm out. I think he finally got that leper to a point where he said, God, I'm done. He said, yep, gotcha. Gotcha. I gotcha. Bobby, I gotcha. Jared, I got you right where I want you. But God, that door hadn't opened up for me yet because you're trying to use the master key on something that does not belong to you. You use the keys that God has given you and it will open and you'll walk through it. You'll go from amen to amen, glory to glory. <laughs> you'll go from blessing to blessing the favor of God will rest upon you even when one comes at you one direction God will scatter them so in Jesus name 
I know you guys know him as Savior. I know you know him as Lord. But Jenna, have you made him your pastor? Eddie, have you made Jesus the pastor? Michelle, I know you're going through a lot. Make him the master. Let go. Today's your day. Dylan, today's your day, man. Listen, it's not our fight. Y'all ready? Look at me. It's not your fight, sir. Ma'am, it's not your fight. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your all. My question, I'm done. Is Jesus the master of your life? You guys stand with me. Somebody here today needs Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Please, in Jesus' name, don't walk out these doors lost and undone and living in a land that you don't know if you're going to make it back next Sunday or not. 92 people, Christians, have died at church. We're, we're, listen to me, we're, we're not above the reproach of sin. <laughs> we, we are not untouchable. Life is short. Today may be my last sermon. I don't know. If so, I'm going to pull that woman at Walmart. I, I beat you. I beat you. I love y'all. But God has so much more, watch, than just saving you. Come on. God has so much more than just saving you. God has so much more than he says, I own you now. See, we've all been blood bought. Whether you like us or not, he bought the whole world with blood. But now the ball's in y'all's court. Have you made him master? Have you surrendered your life? Watch already, completely. That's what I'm talking about, Drew. Complete. What does a church that is completely, y'all listen to me, crazy. What does a church look like that is completely surrendered? What does a pastor look like that's completely, God, I want it bad. What does a praise team look like that is completely surrendered? God, I want that. I want to be the best pastor I can be. But I want to be surrendered. I know you know him as Savior. I know you know him as Lord. But do y'all know him as master? So, Father God, I've done what you called me to do. God, I want to surrender whatever this looks like. I'm kind of nervous about it, God, to be honest with you. God, I want to surrender my life. I want to yield my life. I want you to have complete and total authority over my life. I say that, God. But then I always try to reach out and grab something. I always try to do something. So God, right now for my church family, 
May we become surrendered and yielded people. God, may we surrender to your voice and to your authority. So God, bless my family out here today. May they surrender to you right now. Come on, church. This altar's open. you got to surrender. I don't know what that looks like. But we need to surrender to God. We need to surrender our marriages, our home. We need to yield to the presence of God. We do, guys. We need to yield to God. We need to yield. We need to surrender to God. Today may be our last worship service. Let me ask you something. I know you know Him as Savior, as Lord, but is He your Master? Have you surrendered? Have you yielded? Or do you still got to have it your way? You still got to have it your way. Still got to have it your way. You get mad when things don't work out the way you think they should work out. So, Father God, have your way. Bless your people. In Jesus' name. This altar's open, church. Come on. Is he your master? Come on. Is he your master? Come on. Come on. You, only you can answer that. Is he your master? God, whatever you want, whatever you want me to do, God, here I am. Send me. Is he your master?